All right, we are now ready to add some shadows to our floor plan. As we talked about in the book, shadows are the most important part rendering the floor plan, whether you're doing it by hand or on the computer. So there are a couple of different ways that you can add shadows in Photoshop. Let's start with the easiest one, and that would be using the Drop Shadow tool. So I'm going to zoom in on my kitchen area right over here so that you can see this a little bit better. I'm going to my bar stool layer uh, so that I can put uh, cast shadows on my bar stool. Just go to FX and drop shadow and you'll see it's, it's automatically putting one there for me and I can change my angle so that I can make it coming from the top left if I want or whatever just pick a number pick an angle and then stick to it and I am going to go to 45 degrees because I like that angle distance will change how um, far away the shadow is so if you have something that's maybe floating off of the floor you might want to make a larger distance the spread will show how far uh, the depth of the shadow is, um, and then the size um, kind of fuzzies the edges of the shadows. So you can play with those until you get something that you like. And it might be a good idea to remember what the numbers are so that you can keep them consistent throughout all your layers. So I just put them all at 10 and that way that's easy to remember and I can make them all 10 um, as I go through my plan. All right, let's zoom out for a moment. That's looking pretty good. Let's go over to the bed. Let me show you something that tends to happen sometimes when you do a drop shadow. You have to be very um, aware of your layering in terms of what order your layers are in, and I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. So here we're on the bed layer, and I'm going to add a drop shadow. So go to FX. It's at 45, which I like. I'm going to change all these to 10. Oops. So that it matches my other one. I don't know if that's completely necessary, but should look pretty good. Uh-oh, I have a problem. Do you see right here, it looks like the comforter is floating on top of the pillows and the sheets. I'm just going to go ahead and say okay, because other than that, I like the shadow. So what I need to do is change the order of my uh, layers. So I'm going to take my pillow layer and I'm going to pull it up over the bed. And now these pop on top, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, also, the sheets the sheet layer, I want to move up above, oops, not above the not above the pillows, but above the bed. So it's very important that you play around with your different um, order so that you get everything exactly as you want it. And if I zoom out, that should look much better. Okay, great. So there's one other way to do shadows, and that would be by hand. Sometimes. You don't have something that um, as simple as a, a furnace, something on a furniture layer, casting shadow onto a floor layer. Sometimes you have to do it by hand. For example, I have a step right here and I need to put a shadow there to show that there's a step. So I'm going to do it by hand. And the way I'm going to do that, I can use my rectangular marquee selection tool and just grab a little area like that. And I can go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Image, Adjustment, Brightness, Contrast. And I'm going to make it darker. And maybe, once again, you want to um, be cognizant of what numbers you choose so that you can match them later on. So now you can see, hopefully you can see that there's a step there. So in this case, I'm going to use my tool um, that looks like a lasso. And that's because I'm not choosing a square, perfectly square or rectangular shape. 
And now I'm going to go ahead again, image, adjustment, brightness, contrast. I believe I did negative 75. And hopefully now it looks like there's a step down. And there is one more step in the plan, and it's right there. Image adjustment, brightness contrast, negative 75. And so hopefully this is making it look like there are steps because of the shadows. Let's go over here, take a look at the sink. It's another area where um, I would have to do the shadow by hand. So I'm going to use my lasso tool. And I'm just going to select an area just like you would, um, you know, think about if you were doing it by hand, what the area would look like that you would choose. I'm going to back up a little again so that I can see what I'm doing. And by the way, a little trick that can help you if um, the selection edges, known as the marching ants, if that bothers you and gets in your way, makes it difficult for you to see what you're doing, there is a way to shut it off. You go to View, Show, Selection edges. It's still selected, but you're not seeing the little marching ants. Now, it doesn't turn it off forever. It just turns it off for um, it just turns it off for this selection. If I select something else in a moment, then it'll turn back on again. All right, so it's still selected. I can go to image adjustment, brightness, contrast. Oh, it's telling me my area is empty because I forgot to go back to my stainless steel layer. There it is. Image adjustment, brightness contrast, negative 75. And now I have a shadow in my sink. So really I can go through now and anything that is a piece of furniture, casting shadow, should be on its own layer and that should be pretty easy to do. And um, of course it's inevitable though, things like sinks and um, steps and there's always little things that you're going to have to go in and do by hand but that's very easy to do by just using the um, image adjustment brightness contrast and then you will be done.